Good evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've decided we're going to try something this year. Uh, we're glad to have everybody back in person. Uh, but we're going to do the, the live stream and the in-person and kind of see how it turned out. I think we got a, a number of folks that chose the, uh, the live stream portion, but we're glad you came out tonight. Hopefully, uh, you would take the opportunity to, to get around the, the building and be able to check out some apartments and talk to folks here uh, later in the evening. For those of you who don't know, my name is Kurt Barker, and I'm the principal here at Downtown West Public School. And I am just glad uh, to be able to take some time to be able to meet with you tonight and talk a little bit about school selection. Our evening tonight is going to be broken into two parts. We're going to have this first part, and we're going to walk you through the course selection process, followed by our second part, which is going to give you an opportunity to not only walk the building, but also speak with department members about specific questions that you may have related to course selection and different content areas. Here at West, we are committed to making this place a place where every student thrives. And that is something that we take very seriously, uh, both academically and social emotionally. We want your students to push themselves, uh, to be challenged with rigorous academic curriculum, but we also want them to be able to have fun and to be able to look back and say, you know what, while I was here, uh, I had a good time. And I have a lot of bright spots that I can point to, good friendships, good classes, uh, wonderful experiences. That is our goal. And that is what we share with our students on the first day of school every year, is that we want you to find that balance. We do not want students to take so many high-level courses that they become overwhelmed. We really want them to find that balance. So what I encourage you as you're sitting down and you're having conversations with your children at home, talk with them, listen to them, find out where their strengths are, and encourage them to take the highest level of course that they can handle in that content area. One of the challenges, and I've had to take this advice uh, as a parent here, is being able to recognize when to step back and when to ease off. I certainly want to push my own kids uh, coming through. They have a wonderful opportunity. And being in downtown, uh, our kids have access to tremendous resources. Being able to say, okay, this is the level that you are going to be able to thrive at. This is the level where everything is coming together. Is really that, that dance that we do as parents uh, with, our, with our kids, right? Too little and they got too much free time and start getting into trouble and, you know, right? You know. And then too much, we see them starting to get stressed out and emotional. And so we want to find that, that right balance. And every kid is going to have a slightly different balance point. Every year I have some parents that come up to me and say, Dr. Barker, should my kid take, uh, you know, every AP and honors course coming in from uh, middle school that they're eligible for? The answer is probably not. But I've also had some kids where that was the absolute right answer. Some students that have come through, that was their niche. We have to know, we have to know our kids, we have to ask those questions and find that, that balance point for them. Before I turn the, the mic over, I just want each and every one of you to know that as you are listening to the program, as you are trying to figure out what courses you want for your student, please know that we have a wonderful, caring community of staff members here. The adults in this building love being here. They want to be here for your children. They want to support them. They want to push them. They want them to have an excellent experience here. So whether it is a guidance counselor, a favorite teacher, or even one of the administrators here, please know that if they hit that point where they start hitting the wall and they're getting frustrated, that they have good people surrounding them here every day uh, that want to be there to support them and help them through that. Again, I can tell you, even though I'm the principal here and I've had two kids come through, um, my guys have hit that point, right? And I needed to lean on people here. Okay, here we go. Put one foot in front of the other, and it's going to be good. 
and we can get you through because it's part of what we do. And that's part of that growth and maturation process is working through adversity, persevering, and seeing that, oh wait, I actually can. I can do more, I can accomplish more. I can push, I do have a little bit more capacity. But you have to know that you have that support along the way. And that's part of what we're looking forward to, to working with your students coming up here. Guys, again, I want to thank you for coming out. we got a lot of great information. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to take a look at some of the information that we've posted online with Schoology on the West website. There are links for everything that you could possibly need for the course selection process. Um, and the, the, the Google Drive, that's the department resources. If you've not already taken a look at those, please sit down with your students. Go through those things. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But at this point, I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Barr and Mr. Bukowski, and they're going to walk you through the process. We'll be around to answer some questions at the end. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you. First and foremost, I just really want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I, uh, this is my fifth year being an assistant principal working under Dr. Barber here at Downingtown West, and course selection night is one of my favorite evenings. Uh, it's the first time that for many of our students, they get an opportunity to walk through these doors and it becomes real. Uh, they start to realize, oh man, I'm going to high school. And this place is amazing. Uh, and it really is going to provide our students with an opportunity to thrive. I want you to know that tonight, as we go through, there is going to be a lot of information which we're going to share with you. You do not have to memorize all this information in one evening. In fact, we have made sure to post it primarily the number one place that you can go. All of your students have been enrolled in the Schoology course. That's students that are in 8, 9, 10th, 11th grade. They are now eligible and enrolled in the Schoology course. It's called Course Selection 22, 23. But for parents, if you click on the Course Selection information on the Downtown West webpage, you will find all of this information I'm going through. In fact, when we're finished tonight, I will actually post this presentation so you can always go back and review it if you have questions. So as I go through it, if you're sitting there trying to take notes and figure out, okay, am I getting everything I need to, just please realize that it's going to be accessible for the next couple of weeks. One of the things that we're going to have to talk through tonight is some of the logistics with how we're going to get you and your people logged in to make sure that you can get all your courses selected. Here at Downtown, we're very lucky because we have four administrators. Dr. Barker obviously is our principal, and the three assistant principals you can see up there. Much like our counselors, we partner with families over the course of your time here in Downingtown. In other words, we loop with our families as you matriculate through the school. This does a lot of things for us. The most important thing is it really helps us partner with you to create relationships that are going to help your students. So we're going to be there with you when things are going well. We're going to be there to help you answer questions. And we all acknowledge the fact that high school can be a very difficult time. It can be difficult socially and emotionally. And kids will be challenged, and they will face adversity. You know that you will always have a partner here in the form of your administrator and your son or daughter's guidance counselor that's going to be with you to help guide you through the next four years. So please know that we're going to be partnering with you as we go through the next four. Up here, and again, you can see all this information. The way that we divide up our caseloads is we do it by alphabet. So you can see right here, the last names, and then the counselor will be assigned to working with your family over the next few years. All right, if you ever have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to this team and they will help you in any way that they possibly can. Real quick, just to give you a summary, because a lot of people, one of the first questions they ask is, well, what do I have to take while I'm in high school? And the answer is, it truly depends. There are certain requirements which we are absolutely mandated to follow, all right? And those will not change, and that's what you'll see up here. All right, most of the things that we'll talk about, though, that there's room for flexibility, depending on what your students' goals are for after they graduate from high school. And we'll be having those conversations with them throughout their time. Down in 10. 24 credits is the total amount of credits that we need in, in order to award a diploma after a student completes their senior year. All right, students average six a uh, year, and that gets them to the 24. The vast majority of students do end up taking a little bit more than six, but Mr. Borkowski will go through the allocate, uh, allotment, allocation of those credits as we go through the rest of the presentation tonight. A lot of students come in very worried about the Keystone exams, and there's a lot of emerging uh, news and updates about the Keystone exams and their status. The most recent guidance we've gotten from the state is that they are a requirement for graduation. The students must earn proficiency on the three end of course um, assessments that you see up here, Algebra 1, Biology, and English, which will take them 10th grade. 
In addition to that, the graduation project is still a graduation requirement for us. We're excited to uh, explain what that is to you in a little bit. And then finally, as of right now, it is still a graduation requirement to take a blended or a cyber course. Years and years ago, when I was still an educator here in this building, they identified that we were moving into a world where online learning and being able to access your education through technology was gonna be critical. The one thing I can absolutely say is that every one of the students that is in this room has experienced that over the last two years, and I think you have done an unbelievable job experiencing that. So know that that is still listed on there, but as you're going through course selection, I don't need you to be super concerned about that. Take a blended course or a cyber course because you're interested in the format. All right, we're gonna be talking to the administrative team about how to address that graduation requirement as we move through the next couple of years. But we are super proud of our students and how well they have adapted, in part because of having these requirements as part of our curriculum. This is going to be a little bit complicated, but what I want to explain to you as we go through is there are alternatives to helping your students. If you say that, you know what, my student is just not a great test taker. You know, Mr. Barr, I've never been good at taking tests. We hear this all the time. We still have pathways that are assist our students to get to the finish line. There is a lot of information about this, and one of the things I will do is as soon as this is concluded tonight, I will post a lot more information under each one of these bullet points. But these are alternative pathways that have been put in place so that students can still attain graduation even if they struggle with taking those end of year high stakes assessments. All right, so for students who do typically and historically struggle on those type of standardized assessments, there are four pathways that can still help you reach the finish line. And the most important thing I need you to understand is that we'll be constantly monitoring and working with your student over their time here at downtown to make sure they are hitting those markers as we go. This is not something that's going to come out of nowhere when a student enters their senior year. We'll be having ongoing, powerful conversations, again, each and every year, about how your student's progressing through the curriculum. And now at this time, I am going to go ahead and ask Mr. Mike Morkowski, who's the head of our counseling department, to come up and really go through some of the specifics about how we allocate our credits in your student's academic plan. So Mr. Mike Morkowski. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Glad to be here tonight. My youngest is a member of the class that's coming up, so I'm really excited to be talking about this information because it's the last time I have to go through it as a parent. Um, so, how do we get you to graduation? Well, first of all, we have a team of wonderful counselors that is going to help get you to that point. We're going to be working with you as last names part of the alphabet each of the next four years. Um, and really, the whole point of course selection is to make sure you get the credits that you need for graduation. So we're going to break this down as to what you actually need to meet graduation requirements. Uh, the standards are our major subjects, English, social studies, Math and Science, you need four credits of English and Social Studies, three credits of Math and Science. You need one credit of World Language, and then one additional year of Math, Science, or Foreign Language. Then we add in our elective credits, 7.66. Wellness and Fitness is a requirement. Most students will take that in ninth grade. Some students will not, but we strongly recommend that you take that requirement in ninth grade. Health is a typical 10th grade course. Again, not all students take it in 10th grade, but we strongly, again, recommend that you take that in 10th grade. And then you have two remaining physical education electives. Uh, those will be of your choosing. And then six elective credits. And then finally, the graduation project. Now, this is what Downingtown requires for graduation. 24 credits. But many of our students will exceed this credit total. We have our students averaging 25.5, 26, 27 credits by the time they graduate. They are exceeding six credits per year. Um, what I'd like to say as well about these requirements, this is the minimum that we require. What do colleges expect? They expect that you exceed the minimum. So, what we recommend as a counseling staff is that you are taking four years of English, Social Studies, Math, and Science. You are taking two to three years of the same foreign language. If you can take additional math, science, or languages, that's nice as well. But those are what we're recommending as a staff. A lot of times, students will bulk up their first two, three years, and they get to senior year, and they're like, let's take our foot off the gas pedal. And while that's all right, in some instances, we still do recommend that you take the four majors, that you're taking 5.5 credits, 
that you're exceeding the average because you are competing against students nationwide by using your transcript. You want to have a competitive transcript. We want to make sure that you've exceeded the minimums that we set out here at Downtown West. Thank you, sir. Next part is the graduation project. Graduation project is something that must be done beyond the classroom. For every year I've been here, and this is my eighth year at West, there is always a rumor that goes around that the graduation requirement is no longer a requirement. We have gotten rid of it. Talk to your school counselor. I've heard it from an administrator. I heard that from a teacher. I'm here to tell you the graduation requirement the project has not gone anywhere. It is still here. It's a still a requirement. Why? Because we believe in it. At Downtown West, we believe in our community. Our students are a big part of that community, and giving back to that community is something that takes place as part of this graduation project. Many of our students will do community service. I'd say probably 75, 80% of our students will do community service as their graduation project. That's not the only vehicle. We've had students do projects of their own design. I've had students write poetry books, produce plays, rebuild a car, build a deck on the back of their house, learn a martial art, learn an instrument. The graduation project just doesn't have to be community service, but for a majority of our students, the graduation project is community service. All we're asking is that you do 40 hours, um, and any, and if you, whatever you decide to do, it must be submitted as a proposal to our graduation pro project committee here at West. Um, this is something that if you, as a rising eighth grader, want to get started between the summer of eighth and ninth grade, you absolutely may do so. We've had some students come into West having their graduation project completed. Typical ninth grade course selection. That's what we're here to learn about tonight. What is typical? So definitely, we want you to schedule your four major subjects, English, Social Studies, Math, and Science. We strongly recommend wellness and fitness. If there's some reason you can't take wellness and fitness, please talk to your counselor about that, starting at the middle school. So that's gonna make up 4.5 credits of your course selection. Moving on, one of the electives that we recommend again to start your ninth grade year is foreign language. Get that year of foreign language out of the way right from the start. Again, we are recommending two to three years of the same foreign language at the high school level, but you wanna start with one of those as your electives. That takes us up to 5.5. And then that leaves you room for two or one additional electives. 2.5 credit electives are one full credit elective. You can go up to seven credits, that is your choice, but taking seven credits is gonna leave a student with no free time in their schedule. And for some students that works, you like to be busy, you like to stay active, you wanna be taking classes, you wanna fill your schedule, that's fine too. But we have found, and a majority of our students will take a study hall, have that built into their schedule so that they have a break every other day, some downtime to socialize with friends, which I know parents don't want to hear, but that's what happens, or to get some work done, which is what we want them to be doing. Um, but we are recommending 6.5 credits. When choosing classes, some things you want to consider. Number one, past achievement. How have you fared in classes prior to this point? Have you done well, A's and B's? Absolutely. Um, teacher recommendations to us as counselors at the middle school as well, and here at the high school, we take teacher recommendations very seriously. Yes, you can go against teacher recommendations. Yes, there are some that feel that teacher recommendations, that you're, you know the teacher doesn't know my kid, but say, the teachers really do know your kids. They see them more than we do typically over the course of the year during the school year. They are seeing, they are seeing what they are doing in class. They are seeing the effort that they put forth. They are seeing how much they do their homework or how much they do not do their homework. They are seeing their tests on their grades. They are able to evaluate really well how ready your student is for that next level. So when teacher recommendations, they will be in the system when you log in. When you open up that academic planner, your teacher recommendations will already be there. Please be mindful of those recommendations. Um, we take them seriously, and we will discuss with your student when we have individual meetings with them. If, the, if a recommendation was changed, we're going to talk about why. Um, a 
course prerequisites play a big choice in when, when choosing your classes. Some courses that we offer here at West do require that you take a course prior to moving on to the next sequential course. I mean, things like uh, French 1, moving on to French 2, that's an obvious one. Uh, you know, Graphic Arts 1, Graphic Arts 2. But there are some courses like physics where you need a prerequisite math course to be taking physics. So please, take a look over at the course selection guide. It lists all the course prerequisites that we have for our courses. That's the best source of information about which, what might be needed for certain courses. And then, of course, when you're choosing your classes, make sure you're meeting graduation requirements. Those things that I laid out to start, make sure you're getting your four years of English and math, English and social studies, your three years of math and science, at least your one year of foreign language, that you've got all your physical education requirements. Make sure as you're picking classes that you are checking off those requirements that you need to meet for graduation. Ninth grade honors, again, going back to teacher recommendations, we are going to take a hard look at those teacher recommendations. If you know they're recommending honors, we're going to see that. Obviously, what we are suggesting is that you have an A or B in your preparatory eighth grade course. So for English level one, you have an A or B to move on to honors. Um, and those are the other courses listed there that we want to see an A or B in. Again, you can go against teacher recommendation. We don't advise it. We will have a conversation with you about it. Um, but if you strongly feel your student must be in an honors class despite not having the prerequisites of an ARB or teacher recommendation, we will allow that to happen. Um, honors courses have enhanced quality points, so for those of you who are looking to bump up your GPA, yes, by taking an honors or AP course, you will see increased AP, you will see increased GPA uh, averages due to those courses. Considering advanced placement, and we're going to talk about the different levels of courses in another slide, but if you're considering advanced placement courses, please know that these are college level courses taught at the high school level, so all the content that would go into a semester course at the college level is being taught to your high school student. Yes, it does demonstrate to colleges that you are prepared for the rigor of post-secondary school, and while we do recommend it, again, this has to be a family choice. Our honors classes are also very rigorous. There is extra effort that needs to go into those courses as well. Please don't overwhelm yourself by pushing yourself to take an EP course. Do we like to see it? Does it show preparation? Yes. Do colleges like to see it? Yes. But if it's not right for your student, if it's not right for your family, if the stress is going to be too great, there, there are other paths, folks. There are other paths, and we are here to help you find those paths. Special education courses, again, those are determined through an IEP team discussion. So prior to coming up to the high school, you will sit down, if you have an IEP, you will sit down with your case manager at the middle school, and they will help you pick up the supports that will be needed at the high school level. In some cases, these supports replace electives. We do want you to be mindful of that. Um, but they are going to work to make sure that you have all your major subjects. We are going to work to make sure that you get all your graduation requirements and that we discuss as a team to make sure your needs are met when you come to the high school. We want you to have that successful transition. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Barr to talk about the different course formats that we're offering this year because there's some new information. Thank you, Mr. Professor. Everyone is doing a great job. I told you, there is a lot of information here. All right, but once importantly, this is going to be the fun part for students because when they go into the step that we're going to go over here in a minute, which is their academic planning, and actually choose their courses, you're going to see that not only do you have different levels of course to choose from based off of your student's ability, whether it's honors, a level one course, or even an AP course for a couple of our freshmen for our upperclassmen, but you're also going to see that we offer our courses here at West in a number of different formats. So what you'll see is next to a course number, you will see a letter designated. For instance, our ninth grade English would be a 0011. In this case, if you saw a T at the end, or no number, no alphabet, uh, alphabetic um, letter, then that would just be your traditional course. It happens in person every single day, 48 minutes, one period out of the cycle, a six day cycle. If you see a B next to it, we offer a certain number of courses here in what's considered to be a blended format. And then for those of you who don't know, a blended format means that you are splitting your time between being in person 
and then having free time during your school day where your student will be completing asynchronous work. In other words, schoolwork will be posted on Schoology. They'll have an opportunity to go through and do some independent reading, independent application of skills, and then they go meet with the teacher every other day. Some students really enjoy that model, especially if they were successful over the last couple of years as we were doing virtual learning. It might be something that students would like to consider. A C designation will tell you that that course is offered in the cyber format. Students are allowed to take courses in the Downtown Cyber Academy while still attending West here consistently. That would be considered a part-time um, cyber enrollment. All right, so those of you who are interested, there is a ton of information available. I know that our coordinator of the Downingtown Cyber Academy was not available to come to this evening's event, but she has posted a video from their open house they did last week on the DCA's website. For students who are interested in either full-time or part-time options through the DCA, please visit the site and make sure that uh, it's appropriate for you and your family. If you see the S designation, this is brand new. No student has ever had the opportunity to do what we are now offering for our students here at Downing Academy. All right, semester courses. All right, so right now, we operate on a four marking period count where students, marking periods one, two, three, and four, will have a class throughout the entirety of the school year. For the first time, we are gonna to start to offer courses that run on a semester basis. So for a .5 credit elective, or a class that would typically meet every other day, if students select it in a semester format, they will have the opportunity to take that class each and every day. So I'll go through and explain a little bit more about the cyber course options we have. So you can see the difference, traditional blended cyber or semester, they all do a lot of the same things for us. The GPA weight is the same, the curriculum is the same. The only one that's gonna be a little bit different for you is how much time they spend face to face with the teacher per day. And then also with staff. So if a student does a traditional course or a blending course, they are going to be in this building physically and have a Downtown West teacher working with them throughout the entirety of the year. If for whatever reason you decided that Downtown Cyber Academy was an option you would like to explore, we actually have teachers that work in our DCA from across the district. So that teacher might actually be employed at Downtown East, at Downtown Middle School, or even at one of our elementary schools and work with your student virtually um, after school hours, during school hours at their availability. Um, so that's the only difference between the cyber courses and the traditional blending courses. So going back to our semester courses, this really does three things. We offer, like for instance, I can think of a few examples. One of the courses that I know is going to be very appealing to our students, our art department is offering one of our popular art classes called Drawing and Painting 1 and 2. Right now it meets three times a cycle, which is every other day. But for some students, that's not enough. Some students want to have their hands involved in artwork every single day. So for that student, it might be appropriate to choose Drawing and Painting 1 in this semester format. So that way, for the first two marking periods of the year, for example, they would be able to meet with their art teacher each and every day and work through a full year's worth of curriculum in marking periods 1 and 2. And if they get through that first one, then they have the opportunity to take what's called Drawing and Painting 2, the second semester. So for students who are really interested in any of the encore areas or the elective classes that we're talking about, it gives you a chance to experience the classes that you love each and every day, and we think that's going to be a really big benefit for our students. The other one is we do offer now the opportunity for students to accelerate through our math sequence. In other words, students who come up and then want to take an honors algebra 2 or an honors geometry can now do so in a single year. So if your student is the type of student that's saying, oh, I want to be an engineer, I can't wait to graduate and go on and study math or science, and we want to get them to the top tier courses that we offer through our math sequence and curriculum, then we would try to encourage them to take a chance and take Algebra 2 and Geometry in the same school year. So it allows certain students to accelerate themselves. The other part that I think is really exciting is for those of our students who absolutely love foreign languages. All right, If you are interested in foreign languages, it's your favorite subject, you might want to consider doubling up on your foreign language in this single year. For instance, Spanish or French are offered so that you can complete French 1 and French 2 in a given school year. In those courses, since they're worth full credit, you will actually have a double period. In other words, a back-to-back -back period where you will have a total of 90 plus minutes with the teacher working on immersion in the foreign language. We think it's really gonna open up an opportunity for our students to get to the top tier of our uh, foreign language curriculum. All right, we do offer two AP uh, options for our ninth grade students. All right, we have an AP seminar course and an AP world history course. That would be something for those of the parents of eighth graders who are here. I would encourage you know, your students to talk to their counselor. First at DMS, but obviously they can reach out here to find out which students would be appropriate for that. 
AD seminar is an excellent opportunity uh, for students that are really interested in doing independent research, to think outside the box, to apply their learning, uh, and do a lot of project-based learning. It might be a course that they would want to take. And that would actually uh, function as an elective event. Whereas AP World History is an option that students can take in addition to honors, Eastern Civilization, which is the course that most freshmen take. This is not um, an option for our freshmen coming in next year, but this is an option for your students down the road. We do partner with several universities, Delaware County Community College, University of Pittsburgh, both have dual enrollment option uh, courses here with us so that your students, while they're actually passing high school classes, can earn college credit, which can then be transferred to the school of their choice after they graduate. So that's something we're very excited about. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that was at least going to be an option. All right, now we're going to get down to the nuts and bolts, and I promise, this is going to be fast. I don't want to bore you. I've already taken enough of your time. I want to let you and your family get out and enjoy the building. All right, but I want to show you where you're going to actually go in and do course selection. So you know that both teachers at the middle school this week and teachers at the high school are going in and putting in those teacher recommendations that Ms. Forkowski spoke about. In other words, when you go into your student's plan, you are going to see that it's popular. It's not that they have done anything yet. That was the work that we as teachers and principals are doing here in the building. So you will see some courses in there. What we're going to do is, again, you can find everything at um, our downtown website uh, under course selection information. That's going to be where you find all your information. But really, the most work that you're going to do is going to be done through Infinite Campus. All right? For those of you who have not had an opportunity to access Infinite Campus, I strongly encourage you to become familiar with it. If you're having trouble getting in there, you can get in through your student. They know how to do it uh, through the student portal, but the directions I have here posted are for parents. On the main district page, DASD.org, if you go up in the top corner, there's a button, it's Parent Portal. You're gonna click that, and that's gonna take you to this screen. If you don't have your login information for parent and username, all right, there's gonna be a click here for assistance, or you can email the Assist Me Desk. Those of you who aren't familiar with our Tech Help Desk, it's going to be a vital tool for you over the next few years as you're working with us here at the high school. All right, so make sure that you get your login information. Once you go ahead and log in, this is going to be where we live for this process, the academic plan. All right, when you go in there and you click on the academic plan, which will begin live starting Friday this week, um, your student will have a full uh, week in order to go through and actually make their course selection. All right, once you go through, it's going to ask you, and this is optional, a lot of parents get confused with that, it's going to say, what's your student's plan? And while we know that it is important for us to start thinking about it, your student might change their mind three or four times before their career is over in high school. All right, so put in there what you think. In other words, two to four year university, or my child's choosing to go to the military, my child wants to go to a trade school. You can select that, but it's not necessary. All right, it might just help you give some advice as you go through. Then you're going to click proceed. And this is what the, the actual interface looks like. And you can see it's broken down by department, English, mathematics. This is the example from a junior student. You can see so you can see all the courses they've taken previously in grade 9, grade 10, grade 11. What you'll see is it's going to look like this. The teachers are going through and putting in what their recommendations are right now. You as a family still have the ability to go in and change that. All right, so in other words, if a student was recommended for honors, and based off the conversations that we had with Dr. Barker or Mr. Borkowski, you say, you know what, I, I don't think honors is right for you this year. Let's start you off in, in a college prep level one course. You have the option to drop that down and choose that for yourself. The most important thing is, is that once you get done your collection or your selections on your academic plan, all right, you're going to have to go up and hit save at the top. That's the most important thing. The one. <laughs> caveat to this is it is going to warn you. It is a very intuitive system and it's very helpful for families, but if you're a ninth grade parent, it's going to tell you that your student is in danger of not graduating because they don't have enough credits in mathematics, they don't have enough credits in, in foreign language, they don't have, and that's normal. All right, you can just ignore that. It's a, it's a built-in alert in the system to notify families as they're going through the course selection process. All right, so just click OK after you hit save and then you will be good to go. All right, the important dates that I want everyone to remember is January 21st to the 30th is when online course selection will be open. I know that for the eighth graders that are here in the, in the room today, that they have time allocated over at the middle school to help students log in, make sure they can access it. Their counselors and our counselors have pledged to meet that first two weeks of February when we're in school with every single student to go through their academic plan to make sure that it's in line with what you wanted and obviously what the students wanted. 
it'll help them with the selection of electives and answer any questions at that point. All right, so again, this is not something that you're on your own to figure out. We are here to partner with you the whole time as we go through and we guarantee that your student will have a schedule up and running by the time they start here with us next year. The other important date that I didn't put on here is you can always change your mind, but we ask that any child or any family that's making a change uh, as far as what their request would be for the following year, it happens before summertime starts. So that last day of May, May 31st, and we'll communicate that about a month ahead of time to let you know um, for instance, you might want your student to sign up for honors mathematics next year, and then you realize, you know what, my, my daughter really struggled with mathematics. Maybe that's not for us. Let's go ahead and call the council. We can always change the record leading up to June. Okay. All right, the last thing I just want to say is uh, thank you, uh, honestly. I know how valuable your time is. I know how crazy life can get with all the activities and all the places that you could be tonight if you chose to be here. Um, and we do. We really appreciate that more than I can say. Um, being a part of this place it is one of the greatest things in my life. Um, it is an absolute joy to watch our students come in here with the look that I see on some of the 8th graders' face where they're like, oh my gosh, what are these guys talking about? And by the time they leave, they feel great about West, they feel great about the relationships that they made. And overall, just know that as, as, Mr., as Dr. Parker pointed out, um, I've never been around a group of adults or educators that care more about kids. Um, every single educator that is in this building truly, truly wants nothing but the best for your child. Uh, we're going to be here with you uh, for the next three to four years, depending on what grade you're in. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. All of our email addresses across the district are typically a first initial and a last name. My name is Matt Barr. You can always email me directly at mbarr. Or feel free to partner with any of the relationships that you formed at the middle school or in your previous buildings. Right. The last thing I want to say is we have set up a very unique opportunity uh, tonight to get a uh, walk around the building and get a chance to go see what Downingtown West is all about. Typically, we do course selection in the cafeteria, but just in order to make sure that everybody was able to space out and everybody felt comfortable, we have actually moved our departments around sort of like to their different areas of the building. All right. So if you have your cell phone on you, feel free to take a picture you know, of this. Uh, we also have this streaming on the television screens that you'll see around the building. And for those of you like myself that are a little bit more traditional, right outside on our attendance desk, I actually printed out about 60, 70 copies of this very um, same document. So um, feel free to walk around the building. Each one of those rooms is going to have our department leader there. If you have specific questions, they would be happy to help you. And for those of you who are planning on coming to the West next year, welcome. We're super excited to have you. And thank you for your time this evening. Take care.